All right, so this is my Clown Blade Assault Mode deck. It's a simple old concept. The main thing I used to make Stardust is Flameville Magician, Nary Fire. So that's just a simple old two-card combo. Make Stardust, activate Assault Mode, activate, and I can bring out Stardust Dragon Assault Mode. Simple enough. But Nary Fire also is useful with uh, int uh, Performage Trick Clown. And you know, has a nice little quick rank four engine um, right there alone. So you could do it like a first turn uh, rank four play. There's no Cyber Dragon Infinity design in here. Uh, it'd be nice. I could modify the deck to try to incorporate it, but that means I have to knock off a couple uh, cards in my extra deck. This deck is largely more synchro base and assault mode is the main the main strategy in the deck i just got the added strategy of a nice little rank four engine with the whole clown and then the thousand blades <coughs> thousand blades effect when you take battle damage or effect damage you can special summon this card from your uh from your graveyard in face of attack position so when uh, Trick Clown goes to the graveyard. You, no matter how it goes to the graveyard, you can activate this effect, special summon it, or special summon any uh, performance monster in your graveyard. Uh, but you could target itself, of course. Target itself, bring itself back, take a thousand damage. Because you took a thousand damage, you could bring a thousand blade back from the graveyard, and there's your little rank four engine. <coughs> Uh, there is a combo where um, with Thousand Blade where you can summon Thousand Blade, discard a copy of Thousand Blade, bring out a Thousand Blade, overlay the two Thousand Blade, and go into a Heroic Champion Excalibur in case you need to take down a, a tower from uh, the Qualoff, Qualoff Tower. So that's useful. Or just to take down anybody or just to uh, uh, beat your opponent, you know what I mean? Deal them 4,000 damage and win the game. Uh, you can end up in a scenario, of course, where uh, you have Foolish Burial. You can Foolish Burial, send Trick Clown to the graveyard, then he'll special summon. You'll take a thousand, of course. And then you can summon Flameville Magician and go into, you know, your single play. Or you can summon Thousand Blade, go into a rank four. You know, or, and of course you could, if you get the clown already, you know, by the foolish effect onto the field, summon Thousand Blade or anything other than Inari Fire, just like Flameville Magician or Thousand Blade. And then you can special summon Inari Fire from your hand. And I have three level four monsters on the field, and then you can overlay and go into some rank for what it requires. Three. There is none in this. In this deck but that's something that could happen offerings to the doom think of it as a MST for monsters it's a good way of thinking of it right it's an MST for monsters so it's, it's a nice little quick play it's a quick little out to uh, um, to certain monsters because uh, sometimes you want to do stuff like you want to you want to get rid of a monster that prevents you from special summoning, for example. Or you want to get rid of a monster that prevents you from even using your monster's effects. Uh, sometimes you just want to get rid of a monster that's just too big and strong. And this is useful in that in that aspect. Let's say you, for example, let's say you have, you know, you have, you have, you have your little, you have your little traps on the field, you know, set up, ready to roll, and then somebody called a haunted. Plays Call Haunted, brings back Jinzo. It's like, damn, now all my traps are relatively useless and he can attack for game. You know, good thing Offense to Doom is a spell. It's a quick play, so you can't play it during your opponent's turn. Play it, kill the Jinzo. Not only is the Jinzo gone, so he can't attack you, then all your traps are, are, are alive again. You know, they're, they're capable of being played. So just think of it as like a monster MST. It has the effect of skipping your next draw 
uh, phase, but giving up, you know, a draw, an extra card, so to speak, um, just to gain field advantage is worth it. And if you already have a draw engine, your deck is capable of drawing, then it's not even a problem to give up one draw phase. Of course, you can stack this so you can play multiple offerings in Doom, and you still only skip one draw phase. Moving on, Galaxy Cyclone, obviously very good. It's uh, it double dips, as it were, because you can target a set spell or trap on the field, destroy it. During your main phase, except the turn it was sent to the graveyard, you can banish it from the graveyard to target one face up spell or trap card on the field and destroy it. So you get you get two uses out of it, so that's always good. Especially if you're in a scenario where you discard it for like wing blast or something. Um you know, you, you still get use out of it even though you used it as a cost for a wing blast. The following turn you can use it from the grave for you know, to get rid of something of great importance that might be hurting you, like a skill drain or something. Shadow in prison, whatever, whatever could, that is empty, whatever could be stopping you from winning the game that is continuous, you can get rid of it with, by banishing this in the grave. MST helps you get rid of back row, you gotta get rid of back row, because your opponent's gonna have a trap, they're gonna have something. Even if it's not a trap, it, it could be like Necro Valley or something, and you need to you know, banish stuff in your graveyard, or you need the ability to call Haunted from your graveyard, or resurrect stuff in your graveyard, or just add stuff in your graveyard to hand. You need to get rid of that Necro Valley, right? So, that's the space out of them. Uh, you could be in a scenario where somebody plays a field spell, or summons a malefic Cyber End Dragon or something, tries to attack you. You might want to MST that field spell so that way you can get rid of that Cyber End Dragon so you don't take 4,000 to the face, so forth and so forth. So, obviously, it's a real useful card. Um, if somebody plays Vanity's Emptiness, for example, and you try to special summon, you can chain this, get rid of the emptiness, and still perform your special summon. Especially if you're trying to exceed or synchro. Or you're trying to get your Clown Blaze effect to activate and they chain Vanity to stop it, you can chain MST and get rid of the Vanity, so that way, you know, you can continue your, your special summon and continue your combos. Win Win Blast, that's generic, it'll help you get rid of any card on the field without destroying it so that's that's tends to be useful sometimes because there's some cards that can't be destroyed so this is good against cards like that sometimes you don't want to destroy your card like you don't want to destroy the shadal fusion monsters you don't want them going to the graveyard because they're just going to trigger their effects of getting back the shadal fusion spell card and that's something you don't want them to have because that's the main important card in their main in their main deck to help them help the deck function so you definitely don't want them to get that back so sending the fusions back to the extra deck is better um, there's also other monsters that just get effects for going to a graveyard by not letting them go to the graveyard they don't get their effects uh, you know of course you use this to get rid of somebody else's clown you know trick clowns so that way they can't have their little clown blade engine in a mirror match type scenario uh, Women Blast can also help you uh, gain a couple of extra turns, you know, extra turns is always good because you're slowing down your opponent by putting a card they already played and let's say it was a useless card, like it wasn't a big deal, let's say it was just, let's say it was a field spell that only gives their monsters 300 extra attack, alright, throw it back on top of your deck, so you're going to draw it again, which is going to be useless, it's only 300 extra power, and you know, I already have a big strong monster you're not going to be able to uh, mess with, and you're not going to draw an out yet, to get rid of my monster because you drew that field spell that only gives you 300 boosts. And going on. Black Wonder Heaven, really good against Synchro Summoning, Exceed Summoning, Contact Fusion Summoning like Ritual Beast be doing. So it's good against stuff like that. It's good against uh, JD, you know, Judgment Dragon, Black Luster Soldier, Cyber Dragon, any monsters that can, you know, summon themselves. And that's one of the main ways they special summon themselves is by special summon themselves like Cyber Dragon, BLS, Cast Sorcerer, and so on and so on. Because <clears throat> this deals with inherent summons. This is also obviously really, really, really good against Pendulum Summoning. Your opponent Pendulum Summons, you activate this and send all the monsters to the grave. If those monsters are Pendulum Monsters, they won't go face up to Pendulum Zone, um, um, to the extra deck. They'll go straight to the grave, which is great because you can't Pendulum from the grave. Not yet, anyway.
<laughs> That'd be crazy if you could, right? Not yet, anyway. So this would be a good out for pendulum summon against call offs and any other deck that pendulums. So you gotta have some type of defense and response to you know the potential OTK power of pendulums. Moving on, uh, red dragon, uh, red screen, defensive card. It's continuous, so that's what's useful about it. That's what makes it defensive, right? Because it's continuous. You can attack your opponent. Monsters cannot. You lose a thousand during your end phase. That's not optional. <clears throat> if you only have a thousand life points, which it sucks, but that's the way Konami wants to rule it. If you have exactly a thousand life points during your end phase, in which this card's effect triggers, you will lose the duel. That sucks. It should self-destruct itself, but it doesn't, according to Konami. But if you have less than a, a thousand life points, the this card will self-destruct. Um, but of course, you can always get rid of it with an MST or a card effect or whatever you want. You could go into like an Exoton play and just blow it up along with other cards. Also, I'm gonna activate, of course, so you can go into Stardust Assault mode. Stardust Assault mode, of course, once per turn by tributing itself as a cost, you can negate sp uh, a spell, a trap, or a monster effect that you know the opponent played and destroy that card. And during the end phase in which you activate that effect, you can special summon Stardust Dragon Assault mode from the grave. If Stardust Dragon Assault mode is ever destroyed by battle or card effect, you can return regular Stardust Dragon from the graveyard onto the field as long as it was summoned properly. For those who might not know how Stardust Assault mode works. Skill Drain is obviously goes in combination with Stardust Assault mode, Stardust and Colossal Fighter and also works good with Crazy Box. Because they won't really be affected negatively by skill drain's uh, effect negating ability. You activate, you pay a thousand. The effects of all face up effect monsters on the field are negated, not graveyard. So when Classifier goes to the graveyard and activates his effect in the grave, he can resurrect himself or any other warrior monster in any player's graveyard. Um, if you activate Stardust or Stardust is almost effect, you know, tributing for a cost to activate its effect. Since it's in the grave, when it resolves, of negating a card effect, it won't get, neg get negated because skill drain only negates on the field, card, you know, monster effects on the field, not in the grave. So it works really good. And my main, you know, strategy in these assault mode decks is assault mode, red screen, skill drain. That's my triangle of power. That's why I like to call it my triangle power. Get those three cards on the field, and I got, and I got a lot of power, a lot of uh, control, a lot of field advantage. Because skill drain, of course, takes care of any monster effects. Red screen makes it so we can't just summon a big monster and run my monsters over and beat me. <coughs> but I can definitely attack you if I activate start as assault mode's effect to negate a, a, a spell card effect, or trap, or a monster effect. That, that, that applies outside of skill drain's ca uh, monster effect negating capabilities, of course. You know, I won't be defenseless by not having a, a 3,000 on the field. So skill, you know, red screens protects me from getting attacked. Because somebody could easily be like, all right, play dark hole and be like, all right, I'll negate it. And then, all right, summon a whole bunch of monsters to attack you for game. So you need red screen to protect from that. And, you know, red screen protects you and your stardust and your assault mode. And Stars of Soma protects your red screen, which protects you and, you know, the triangle. <coughs> Foolish Burial. It helps you, you know, uh, set up, you know, get your little clown blade effect off. That's mainly what it's there for. But it could also help you get stuff in the graveyard for Soul Charge or Rekindle. So, it's a, it's a quick way of thinning out the deck. Soul Charge is a super powerful version of Monster Reborn, essentially, right? So you can bring back all your monsters. So even after you make Star to Soul mode, you can play uh, Soul Charge, bring back a Stardust, and bring back the Fusion Material, I mean, the Synchro Materials, Synchro again, make another Stardust for any of the 8-star Synchros. If you have an extra Assault mode, I play that, and now you got 2-star to Soul mode, all that fun stuff. So obviously it's a very good card. Rekindle. It serves a similar purpose to um, Soul Charge. 
but it could potentially you know help you OTK your opponent because you can't attack in the turn you use this card and this card is only really useful with Flame Veil Magician in Airy Fire. A combo you would do is you normal summon Flame Veil Magician, special summon in Airy Fire because you have a spellcaster on the field. Synchro into any of your A star synchros. Hot Red Dragon Archfiend is a is a, is a good mon a good choice because he's three thousand. Then play Rekindle, bring back the two materials because they they're both fire with two hundred defense. Synchro again into something else like let's say a Scrap Dragon. And now you have a 3,000 and a 28 on the field. That's 5,800 points of damage. Uh, let's let's say you have you do have like 2,000 blades in the graveyard. You could choose Colossal Fighter. He'll be 3,000. So you have so you have two 3,000. That's 6,000 damage. So off of a three card combo, you can deal six you know approximately 6,000 points of damage. Can't argue with them results. Let's see, and then Crazy Box, mainly because he's the 3000 beater with Skill Drain, that's mainly why you have him there. You could use his effects, but he's only really there for the Skill Drain combo. The Goose Drain will help you recycle your Synchros and XYZs, because you know, the, great, the, the extra deck is tight, so it's hard to have multiple copies of the same card, so the Goose Drain will uh, substitute as your multiple copy of certain cards. This deck is largely based off of Star's Assault Mode, so Stardust is the one that gets the triple treatment. But you could knock it off to two copies or one copy and add a couple extra Synchros or Exceeds. You know, if you're going to be using Emerald, it's up to you. Uh, but uh, for me, I'm cool with just three Stardust. I don't need that much. And of course, you detach material Target three monsters in your graveyard, return them back to you know where they belong, extra deck or uh, main deck, and then draw a card. So that's pretty useful. Heroic Champion Skeliver. By activating his effect, he'll be a nice little 4,000 beater until your opponent's next end phase. The way you make this, obviously, is with two thousand blades. Evil Sworn Exiton Knight. Uh, once per chain, during your main phase or your opponent's battle phase, you can detach uh, material from this card. If your opponent has uh, more cards than you do, combine, you know, hand and field, destroy all cards on the field. And this is a quick effect. So you could chain it to, to a card effect like Trench or something. If somebody tries to play Bottomless, you can chain this and get this effect off before Bottomless resolves. Uh, Diamond Dire Wolf, rank 4, once per turn, attach a material from this card, target one beast, beast warrior or wing beast type monster you control and target, and one other card on the field and destroy them. He's a beast so you can target himself and a card on the field and pop it. Just in case there's something on the field you really 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 need to get rid of, you can use Diamond Dire to, to do so. One on one, very useful defensively, because uh, as long as he has materials, if he would be destroyed by a battle carpet, you could detach one material, so he's not destroyed. He's a nice twenty one hundred. He also has the ability where you can detach two materials from this card to target one special summon monster your opponent controls in face of attack position, and attach it as material to this monster. So it's a good way of getting rid of something that can't be destroyed by battle, or it's just too big and strong for you to you know run it over. You just you know snatch snatch it out the way. Um, and then you know you, you can still attack in the turn you use that effect so that's very useful sky blaster you can detach two materials from this card target one face up card on your opponent's side of field and return it back to your opponent's deck and they shuffle it it's good to get rid of any spells or traps that you don't want your opponent to have especially if it's a spell trap that can't be destroyed this is useful against that typically you use this effect against a monster Get the monster out your way and run and attack your opponent for 2,000 damage. Has a secondary effect where you can detach a material to target one face up um, monster on the field and then uh, changes the face down the fence position. Which could be useful if you use it on yourself. 
so that uh, on a monster that you control, so you can you know activate a flip effect or something, like a dice jar. You'd be like flip dice jar, dice do the dice roll, and then oh you took a lot of damage. Okay, let me do, let me make a rank four, make sky blaster use the effect, put the dice jar face down, you know, and let's say you play a card effect to flip it back up and do its effect again and dice roll and deal more damage or whatever. Colossal Fighter. <clears throat> uh, I mentioned of course earlier if you if you have warriors in your graveyard or, or your opponent has warriors in your graveyard, you add all those warriors up and you gain a hundred attack points for each warrior type monster in any graveyard. If it this dies if this card is destroyed by his auto battle, you can target a warrior monster in either player's graveyard and special summon it. Typically, you will target himself. So you have a nice little infinite defense. Another usefulness is if you attack a monster that has the same attack points as he does, you know, he'll die, the other monster will die, his effect will trigger. You could target himself and bring him back from the graveyard and then attack with him since once he special summons, he will count as a new monster and the new monster is allowed to attack per Konami's rulings. Crimson Blader, useful against any deck that's synchros or special summons monsters level 5 or higher. So by destroying a weak monster, you can make it where your opponent can't summon big monsters. So it would be hard for them to use a monster to take down your Crimson Blader. So that's very useful. This is good against, you know, could be used, uh, you could use it against Necros or uh, Shadals or um, what else uh, you can use it against? Uh, ritual beast, so on and so on. Just kill something on their side of the field, and you don't have to worry about them dropping these big, high level monsters on you. Scrap Dragon. Once per turn, you can target a card you control to target your opponent controls and destroy those cards. So you can, you know, destroy anything extra. Let's say you have an MST and your opponent has a monster, you make, you make Scrap Dragon, set the MST. Use Scrap Dragon's effect, target the MST, target his monster, and kill his monster. So that way, you know, MST can serve a purpose, right? <laughs> and then you can attack your point for 28. Black Winged, Dra uh, Black Winged Dragon. Uh, he's there mainly for chain burn, any burn based decks, any burn based sty uh, uh, you know, burn based effects. Uh, he's useful if you have him on the field and you do, and you, you know, use Clown, Clown Blade um, as a defensive card. Or use them for like card effects. He'll special summon back, and you don't take a thousand. You know, it's not like you take a thousand in order to special summon. You special summon, then take a thousand. So you can use Blackwing Dra uh, Dragon to prevent that damage, and then you know, you have a nice little free uh, tribute fodder. You know, so that makes it very useful to have Blackwing Dragon and then the Clown Blade, and you use Clown Blade for like tribute fodder. For a card effect like Black Horn of Heaven or um, enemy controllers, you, you get the idea, so forth and so forth. So, but mainly this is just to go up against any burn based strategy, any burn decks, you know, Chain Burn, for example, Infernal Tempest, so on and so on. Uh, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend. I mean, another potential, of course, you could use it against uh, Gaga Cowboy. So if you're afraid that your opponent might try to, you know, cowboy you, you can bring out Blackwing Dra uh, Dragon instead of like Red Dragon Archfiend or any of the other synchros. Bring him out instead, attack, deal some damage. Then it's your opponent's turn. You don't have to worry about some type of, you know, quick little two-card combo into a cowboy for game type of type of strategy. They would have to actually contend with your Blackwing Dragon before they could even try to attempt to beat you with the cowboy. Hot Red Dragon Archfiend, awesome, 3000, and has the ability that once per turn during your main phase, you can destroy all other face up attack position monsters on the field. Other monsters cannot attack during the turn you activate this effect. So obviously it's awesome if you manage to survive a turn, or you know if you manage to survive a turn, and you're pointing summon a whole bunch of monsters to try to kill you, and you survive that turn, <clears throat> then you can you know, go into... A nice little quick 
combo, you, let's say you, you rekindle, or you soul charge, or you just summon Flame of Magician in your fire, for example, you know, you just go into a hot red dragon play, use it, pop all their monsters and attack them for 3,000. Un unless you use soul charge, you can't, but if you use rekindle or just a two card Flame Bell Magician and every fire combo, you could just attack after popping all their monsters. And three Stardust Dragon, of course, so you can go into Stardust Assault mode. Optional cards to play of your own choosing is Forbidden Chalice and Divine Wrath. Divine Wrath is pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's definitely useful. It's it's just as good as um, Black Horn of Heaven, depending on what you're using it against. Because you know you can use Divine, because you can use Black Horn Heaven against Ritual Beasts, you know, um, against the fusions. You can use this against uh, 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 Exoton Knights Exceed Summon, against uh, Black Rose Dragons Synchro Summon, against. Uh, Judgment Dragons, you know, special summoning, right? And these are pretty powerful monsters. They can wipe out your whole, your your field if you let them, right? So Black Horn Heaven can negate their summonings, and you don't have to worry about your field getting destroyed. But subsequently, you can also use Divine Wrath to negate their effects. Let them get some. Let them get their effects so, to activate. You'll just negate and destroy them. <clears throat> and this also is uh, Divine Wrath is useful against monsters that don't. Uh, Inherent summons, but could destroy your whole entire field like Beast King Barbaros or something. Your opponent attributes three monsters, summon Beast King, pops your whole field. Divine Wrath would be obviously more useful against that scenario than Black Horn of Heaven. Um, but it's all situational, it's up, up to you. The thing about Black Horn of Heaven is you don't have to discard to use it. Divine Wrath, you do have to discard to use it, but whatevs. You know what I mean? If you're discarding stuff like the the clown and the blade and stuff like that's not that big of an issue because you can bring them back especially the the blade anytime you take damage he'll come back so you always pretty much will have a monster as long as you take the battle damage or effect damage you always have a monster as long as he's in the grave right and then you know it's it's up to you players players preference and then forbidden chance another way of negating monster effects um and it's a it's a and it's a spell card, you know, quick play. So you don't have to worry about uh, Royal Decree, Trap Stun, or Wiretap, or you know, Seven Tools, or anything like that, or even a Jinzo. Um, you don't or Barking or Notorious Beast Barking. You don't have to worry about anything that specifically likes to hurt traps. <clears throat> so you can use Chalice instead of like uh, Breakthrough Skill or Phoenix Chain or something. Um, because they are traps, they're a little bit slower because you can't use them on your turn if you want to. You have to set them and wait a turn, so that tends to be a problem. If unless you, you know, when you're trying to go for game right there, and then you need to negate an effect right there and go for game, blah blah blah. Um, but instead of having these in the deck, I have offerings to Doom because usually, uh, since these affect monsters, it has to do with monster effects. If I destroy the monster, the monster can't really have much of an effect, right? If I destroy a Utopia, I don't have to worry about him negating my attacks. Uh, but I could use Chalice to negate his, uh, his, uh, his attack negating ability. I could use Divine Wrath. You get the idea, but Divine Wrath is a trap. It's a little bit slower than Chalice. But why Chalice when I could just get rid of the monster, period, right? But it's up to you, player preference. And that's the end of the video.